Hey, what's happening, guys? Good morning, everybody. You guys have tuned in to Rules for Rebels, and today is Friday, April 28th, 2023. We've got another one of these rundown videos for you guys today. Uh, we had a lot of stuff to talk about, but a little bit of a slower news day today since we did bring you uh, the bonus video yesterday, covered some of the uh, the news yesterday. Uh, we've got a bunch of stuff to talk about today. Uh, markets finished up big yesterday. I didn't have this one in our notes, but uh, I may have talked about this a couple weeks ago. At the time, it was only a rumor, uh, but it's been confirmed. Capital One is pulling out of uh, offering financing to auto dealers. Uh, basically, most auto dealers don't own their inventory. Capital One basically pays for their uh, showroom inventory. Um, and then as they sell cars, they pay back Capital One. Well, Capital One is getting out of that game, uh, as are a lot of other lenders. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how that kind of affects uh, car dealerships and in the auto industry. Uh, markets finished up big yesterday. Uh, crypto is still kind of trading sideways. Bitcoin a little under uh, 30,000. Ethereum a little under 2,000. Uh, and BNB still holding above $300. I don't know if you guys saw this. Uh, I would say it's worth a watch. I thought it was kind of interesting. I'm not a fan of him, but uh, Mr. Wonderful was on the Meet Kevin show, and I thought he had some interesting insights uh, about the economy as well as crypto. Again, I'm sure a lot of people are probably going to shit on Mr. Wonderful in the uh, the comments, um, and I agree. I, I think he's kind of a grifter and a conman and uh, kind of an a-hole. Uh, but, uh, you know, that, that doesn't mean that he doesn't have any interesting insights about the crypto space or the economy. Uh, we're going to be talking about Netflix and their crackdown on password sharing. Uh, we've been hearing for months that that's coming to the U.S. They started it in Spain and a couple other markets. Uh, well, we've recently learned that they lost over a million users in Spain, so we'll be talking a little bit about that. Uh, Samsung's profits have plunged 95%. Uh, Meta shares up big. Microsoft shares up big. The, mar the market was really up pretty big yesterday based on what uh, I don't know. Uh, we certainly don't have a good economy. We certainly don't have a good job market, uh, but the market is up. Uh, interesting video from the Real Estate Mindset. Uh, Real Estate Mindset, great channel to check out, especially if you're interested in real estate. Uh, and he's been traveling around the country, going to a lot of different home builder sites uh, and kind of reporting back on that. Some of the price drops uh, and uh, some of the, the perks that builders are offering down in San Antonio were crazy. We'll be talking a little bit about that today. Uh, Tampa housing prices and really that entire area from Clearwater uh, down to Sarasota is actually still increasing. And I'm actually gonna be heading down there uh, in just a couple days. So I'll go let you guys kind of know what I see on the ground down there. Uh, Asheville, North Carolina is struggling with a crime problem and, and a bunch more stories we're gonna discuss in today's video. Uh, before we get started, shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Timu. Uh, Timu is a online shopping platform, kind of a social commerce platform, uh, very similar to like a Wish.com, an AliExpress, uh, a DHgate. Um, I find the uh, the site and the na site navigation is a little bit of a better experience than uh, than AliExpress. Uh, the prices, because it's a new marketplace, that they need to be competitive. Uh, the prices are a lot better as well. And a lot of things that you on Amazon would be paying 12, 15, 20, 25 bucks for, uh, you can find on Timu for two dollars, three dollars, four dollars, six dollars. Uh, I recently picked up a bunch of stuff to uh, to get some of my seeds started and kind of start my garden a little bit early this year. Uh, so I got some trellis nets for uh, for growing my cucumbers on. Uh, I got some felt grow bags and uh, some other little gadgets and things like that around the house. Uh, they also have a great affiliate program. They'll pay you five dollars per app download, uh, plus up to twenty percent commission per sale. Uh, and uh, as an affiliate, you guys will get a 30% uh, uh, off coupon to offer to potential shoppers. Uh, so my affiliate link's in the description box below, uh, along with my 30% off coupon code or discount code. So uh, so check that out. Man, we got a bunch of fire trucks coming. I keep having to uh, to, to pull over here. Um, but uh, with all that out of the way, let's, uh, let's get into today's video. So uh, again, today, Friday, April 28th, uh, yesterday, the uh, we always start off with uh, with the markets. Uh, Dow finished up 524 points. Nasdaq finished up 1.27 percent, uh, and the S and P 500 finished up 1.96 percent. Uh, crypto up slightly on the uh, the 24 hour. We got Bitcoin trading at 29,331, ETH at 1913, uh, and BNB at 321. BNB's uh, managed to hold above 300 dollars, although it hasn't seen the run up that uh, a lot of these other coins have. Uh, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum kind of both broke uh, above, you know, kind of broke below uh, kind of their support levels. But things it seems like things are going to kind of be uh, sticking where they are for a little while. I thought Mr. Wonderful on the Meet Kevin show had some interesting uh, comments about crypto. One of the things that he said, uh, he said that crypto is dead to institutional investors. 
And uh, he kind of went on and expounded on this and went on to say that, you know, a couple of years ago, there was so much hype and excitement around crypto. Um, you know, institutions were trying to get involved. Companies were getting, were getting involved. Uh, part of that was the prices were surging and people were really excited. But he went on to say, and I kind of agree with this, he said a lot of institutional investors were, uh, a lot of that excitement in the entire space was kind of based on the idea that regulation would come and some company, whether it be Coinbase or Binance or some other player, uh, would wind up kind of stepping up and being kind of the leader in the space um, and, you know, kind of help kind of set regulation. Uh, but the whole regulation thing is kind of out the window, right? We got Coinbase suing the, uh, the SEC. Um, and that's kind of an interesting story as well. So uh, Gary Ginslinger, the head of the SEC, uh, wasn't that long ago, before he was the head of the SET, when he was a professor at MIT, uh, he was quoted as saying that he didn't think most cryptocurrencies were securities and he didn't think that most ICOs were securities. Uh, yet now that he's the head of the SEC, uh, he seems to think that almost everything besides Bitcoin is a security. Uh, but Mr. Wonderful was basically saying that uh, crypto is dead to institutional investors, at least until regulation comes. Uh, doesn't seem that consistent and meaningful regulation is coming anytime soon. Um, kind of some of his predictions, he kind of predicted that Binance is going to be the, uh, the next shoe to drop. Uh, Binance is going to go under. He said, you know, Binance is the one big player left out there. And one thing that we know is, uh, you know, the government, uh, even the media, like to kind of go after the big player in the space. If you look at just as kind of an example, look at like Jewel Vapes, right? Like, like the government and even the media uh, kind of destroyed. Uh, remember, everybody used to have jewels. Like, you know, vaping's been big for a long time, uh, but everybody used to have jewels. Jewels were like the, the popular vape. Um, well, you know, the government went after uh, Juul saying they marketed towards kids. Why? Because they had like a, a menthol and a mango flavored vape uh, and because it was a sleek design as if adults don't like flavors and sleek designs. Uh, but the government wound up going after Juul. Uh, you know, we still have Mr. Fog and Orion uh, and a million other vape companies that have dragons and cartoon characters all over their vapes. Uh, they're making cotton candy, you know, grape rainbow candy kisses uh, flavored vapes. Like if anybody's marketing to, to kids, it's definitely like every vape company out there. Uh, but the government goes after the big player in the space, Juul. And I think we're going to see the same thing happen to Binance. Uh, you know, all eyes on Binance, all targets are on Binance's back. Um, but Ms., uh, Mr. Kevin, <laughs> Kevin O'Leary, uh, his take was that, you know, because crypto is dead to institutional investors, uh, Bitcoin is going to kind of trade between seventeen and thirty-five thousand dollars for the foreseeable future. Uh, because he said it's a, it's the same people in the space. There's not new money coming into the space. Uh, there's not new people coming into the space. It, it, it's kind of the same uh, same people trading amongst one another. Uh, one thing that that could actually uh, help Bitcoin out and really kind of help the entire crypto market out is uh, we are one year away from the halving. I, I want to say within the past 24, 48 hours, uh, we, we've kind of crossed that mark. We're, we're, we're less than a year away from the halving. Um, and as we get closer to that six, months mar six month mark, uh, historically, Bitcoin tends, Bitcoin, really the entire crypto market, uh, tend to surge in price. Uh, next story of the day. Uh, Netflix loses 1 million subscribers in Spain uh, over the password sharing crackdown. Now, uh, they've been talking about this for a while. They haven't implemented it. Um, I, I guess how this is going to work is you're going to have to have kind of a home network that you log in from. Uh, and you can still use it on vacation, but you're going to have to get codes. So I guess it would be a hassle if, if you have friends or family uh, who piggyback off your net Netflix account. They're constantly going to be having to text you for codes. Uh, I guess you'll be able to add additional users for a couple bucks. Uh, they rolled this out in, an, in a couple other countries to kind of see how it would go down, how it would be received before it came to the U.S. Uh, well, apparently it wasn't received well in Spain. They lost over a million users. Uh, but really, I think Netflix had kind of a tough decision. It's like allow everybody to piggyback and share Netflix accounts uh, and miss out on like 100 million subscribers uh, or, you know, piss off a few people, but actually start collecting money for the service that you're offering. Uh, next story, Samsung's profits plunged by 95% due to its lowest level or to its lowest levels since 2009 as chip demand slumps. Uh, we got MetaShares pop 12% after the company reports the first sales increase in four quarters uh, and issues optimistic guidance. Uh, Meta stock yesterday was up 15% at one point, uh, up about $30 on a day. The stock went from about $211 to $240 uh, just a couple hours after the market opened. Uh, this I thought was an interesting story. So uh, the YouTuber Real Estate Mindset, check out his channel if you're interested in real estate. Uh, he's been visiting a lot of home builds in Seattle, Houston, San Antonio, 
Antonio, uh, Arizona, all over the country. And he was visiting a Lamar home build down in San Antonio. And uh, he was finding that the price, a lot of these homes were being discounted. The price per square foot uh, was down anywhere from 9 to 30%. Uh, overall prices were cut by as much as 20%, but they were also offering a lot of perks. They were offering uh, $30,000 off list price. And in addition to offering $30,000 off list price, uh, they were buying your rate down to a 30-year fixed rate of 4.25%. Uh, you know how much money it would take to, to buy rates down from 7% or whatever we're at, uh, down to 4.25%. It would be literally tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, so on top of offering $30,000 off of the list price of the home, uh, they're also spending tens of thousands of dollars um, uh, you know, buying your rate down for you. And he was going through some of the home prices and how much they've been dropped. I think one home uh, that initially was selling for $540,000, they had down to $440,000. That's a $100,000 price drop. And a $100,000 price drop is, is big on any home, right? On a, on a million dollars, a $100,000 price drop is pretty significant. Uh, but on a $540,000 uh, home price, uh, to drop the price $100,000 plus offer another $30,000 off that, uh, plus buy the rate down to 4.25%. It, it shows that home builders down there uh, are really desperate. Normally home builders wait to complete one phase of a project or a neighborhood before moving on to another. Um, and you know they, they gotta keep making money, they gotta keep building houses. So they're continuing to build uh, even though these homes aren't selling. So uh, well, the, well, markets in many areas are coming down, that's not the case for everywhere. Yesterday we talked about how Indiana's kind of a hot, hot housing market, uh, Crown Point, Indiana, Lafayette in Indiana. A lot of these second and ter third tier cities are becoming really popular. Uh, but in Tampa, house prices are actually up on the year 1.4%. Uh, and there's a lot of markets still increasing due to demand uh, and due to a lack of inventory. There's, uh, there's more buyers than there are sellers in Tampa, uh, Clearwater, St. Pete, I think even Bradenton, uh, Sarasota, all these areas are continuing to grow. Uh, next story of the day, Asheville, North Carolina is struggling with a crime problem. They got a 60-day initiative to turn things around. Um, they've been struggling ever since the uh, the BLM riots. Uh, you know, Asheville's a, a city that has grown tremendously uh, in the past decade, especially in the past couple of years, and especially since the Mexican beer cough. Um, and you know, I think Asheville is, uh, is a fairly liberal city, so I, I think you can kind of blame a lot of their crime problems on that, uh, although I think any city would struggle with, uh, with how quickly they wound up grow, uh, growing. Uh, let's see, profit margin. let's see, what do we got here? I'm confused with my notes here. Uh, profit margins are sliding for Americans who sell their homes. Uh, so another recent article that just kind of talked about how most homeowners would have been better off selling last spring. Um, you know, the only thing kind of propping up prices right now is the fact that there's little to no inventory, uh, but home prices aren't where they were a year ago. Uh, Zero Hedge article, ex-U.S. Army PSYOP expert said Fox News fired Carlson, Tucker Carlson, uh, to, to maintain a semi-lobotomized, quasi-retarded population. Uh, we'll just leave that at that. We won't get too deep into that story. Uh, next story, Elon Musk has, beginning, has begun nuking accounts that tweet a pedophilia pride flag. I probably shouldn't say that word on YouTube. I don't think that's one of the, the banned words on YouTube. Uh, next story, Biden Energy Secretary wants, an all, wants uh, all of the U.S. military vehicles to be electric by 2030. I think that's kind of a, a tall task. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, fire sale, there's a three, you know, we've we, we've all been hearing about the uh, the, the disaster in the uh, commercial real estate industry. Um, you know, a lot of companies are laying people off so they don't need as much office space. Uh, San Francisco is like 60% unoccupied office space. Uh, even companies that aren't fully remote, that are just hybrid. Uh, you know, if you got half your employees coming in Mondays and Wednesdays, half your employees coming in Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, you probably have people hot desking where you only need half the amount of desk because people are just kind of sharing desks on the day that the other person's not in. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of people don't necessarily want to be in cities anymore. A lot of people are moving out to, uh, you know, second and third tier cities, remote areas. Uh, but there's a, uh, an office building in San Francisco that I think just a couple years ago sold for $300 million. Um, it's up for sale. It's mostly empty. Um, and they're expecting offers. I guess the address is 350 California Street if you want to uh, want to look it up. It's expected to sell for 80% less than it sold for just a couple years ago. Um, so, you know, you have a $300 million office building 
building, office building that sold for $300 million just a couple years ago, uh, going to sell for $60 million. Uh, last piece of the notes was kind of about uh, Kevin O'Leary going on the Meet Kevin podcast. I, I think he'd had him on before, but it was over Zoom. Uh, they actually met in person. And again, I thought it was kind of an interesting interview. Feel free to check it out if I remember to do so, which I probably won't. Uh, I'll link to it down below, but you guys should be able to find it easy. It's probably one of the, the most recent three or four videos uh, on the Meet Kevin channel, uh, although he puts out like three, four, five, six videos a day. So it might be a little bit further down. Uh, let's see if we got any notes here. Uh, he had said that he loves New York. He loves to visit New York, but would never invest there. He kind of talked about what a mess uh, New York and a lot of California is. Uh, I think he's crazy. He had said he thinks true inflation is about three or four percent. Um, not sure how anybody could think that, you know, the, the Fed, the government says it's 6%. I think it's probably three to four times that. Uh, but me, Kevin went on to say that he doesn't think the Fed is going to accomplish getting inflation, getting the inflation rate down to 2%. He said he thinks that the new normal is going to be three or 4%. So, uh, on top of, you know, you paying an extra 80% for eggs, 60% for butter. Uh, if we go off the Fed's numbers, you know, over the past two or three years, you're paying, uh, 12, 16, 24% more for everything you buy. Uh, we'll get used to the new inflation rate being three or 4% and not 2%. Uh, I thought this was interesting, a little bit off topic, but they had talked about like generic brands and things like that. Um, and I think Meet Kevin was asking like, do you think more people are going to move to generic brands with, with prices being so high, uh, and name brands costing so much more? And, and, I just thought this was interesting from a business perspective. Meet Kevin had talked about how, um, you know, during tough times, a lot of people do turn to generics, but he said there's a very strong uh, emotional tie and memories uh, attached to brands. If you grew up eating a certain cereal uh, when you were a kid, uh, you're, you're always going to be somewhat attached to that cereal. And I know my dad's like that with Frosted Flakes. I know he loves Green River Soda because when he was a kid, he used to go to the corner store uh, and get, you know, Green River Soda for a nickel or whatever it used to be. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting. And, and one thing Kevin O'Leary said is that uh, uh, generic brands or generic products, uh, you know, they'll, they'll grow, but they never wind up getting over 30% uh, market share. Uh, and then we kind of got the last comment. Uh, he said Bitcoin for the foreseeable future is going to trade between seventeen and $35,000 because it's just kind of the same people trading. Uh, there's no new money coming into the markets and there's no institutional money coming into the markets. Uh, although I think he could be wrong about that. Again, we're, we're within a year of the Bitcoin halving uh, and historically that does bring a lot of people into the space. Uh, but that's all I got for you guys today. Somewhat of a slow news day, but I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the stories today. If you guys... Uh, enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to the channel, click that subscribe button down below and ring the bell. Uh, and as always, I'd love to hear your thoughts, comments, and opinions on anything we've discussed in today's video or any stories or topics that I missed. Uh, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section below, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on Monday's video. Uh, have a great weekend. I'm out.